His newscast theme music was from the Paul Newman movie Cool Hand Luke. Good evening. Here's what's happening. The telephone call. Van Amber, the, the ambitious hour, kid from San Francisco State, fact, erupted on the Bay Area news scene, bringing viewers the this just in news just as it had never group. been done before. And saying something about his friends being dead, about a double murder being committed. Items that would, as Van liked to say, make you laugh, make you cry, and afterwards you'd never be the same. Although Van's career and Channel 7 seemed joined at the electronic hip, he actually stepped into the world of television in 1959 right here as sports director of Channel 5. He also did some play-by-play -play for the Raiders as Fred Van Amberg before going on to Channel 7 10 years later. There, he dropped his first name, became simply Van Amberg, and started taking their newscast from the bottom of the news ratings to the top. At the high point of his career, in Van his and his Channel 7 on Your Side brand of broadcasting and, uh, attracted an awesome number of viewers. At one time, his ratings were double those of his closest competitor. He was controversial, willful, a believer. And he desperately wanted his viewers to believe that the little guy needed a voice. And Van set out to be that voice. He wasn't afraid to take a stand. He delighted in taking on cults and terrorists, anyone he thought was taking advantage of the little guy. As for journalistic objectivity, sometimes that would just have to wait. We've always maintained here on News Scene that nothing's impossible if you care enough and are willing to really go to bat and fight for it. And that was In the 1970s, Van pioneered today. what became known as Happy Talk, light banter woven into the serious news of the day. He'd kid with his co-anchor about a story he'd just read or give the weatherman a hard time about his necktie. Anything to show viewers he was more than a stiff, uninvolved newsreader. Happy Talk seemed to be more stories about cats up a tree than Congress in crisis. Critics started calling it frothy chit-chat. The ratings people called it a triumph. And, and so it was, Van, the newsman first seen on Channel 7 on horseback wearing a white hat, came to the rescue along with the rest of his news gang in this promotional announcement that said it all. Van the Kid Amberg, Big Jerry Jensen. He's been off the air now for six years. Still, every week really people ask me, whatever happened to Van Amber? I called him and said it was time to answer that question. He agreed, appearing on TV for the first time since his sudden disappearance in 1986. What it was we had to do was get on horses. Not really, but we got on horses. A lot of people thought he did it best. During the 70s and early 80s, he led his colorful Happy Talk crew to unprecedented rating success. Television news consultants today, showed his tapes to station mind, managers from it, Bakersfield to Boston, room. telling them this was the future for television news. Here's what's happening. Another big drug raid in San Francisco today, and before the narcotics inspectors were through, they turned up one of the biggest drug supermarkets in San Francisco history. It happened late last night. She was taken at gunpoint from her Berkeley apartment. So far, there has been no ransom demand at all. David Louie has a report on that. He has a report on exactly what has been happening there. And uh, we're going to have that for you as soon as we're able to get the film. Which I but for Van Amberg, Happy Talk was only part of the picture. He was a believer who urgently wanted his viewers to believe his message. And his message was, the news is more than just formless issues that hidden inside those gray, often dull stories was a human being in need. To Q. Howard. Ladies and gentlemen. When the movie Network like was released, more than a few people found a little of Van and the obsessed anchorman Howard Beale. Anytime you watch Van Amberg in action, he was on a mission. He had ratings, money, and total say in the newsroom. Then, on August 29, 1986, the omnipresent Van Amberg vanished from our television screens. When I called him for his first television appearance since that fateful day, he was on a ladder building a treehouse for his grandchildren. Now, for the first time since he disappeared, Van Amberg returns to talk about his life after TV. The courtroom procedures were fairly routine, but what happened after he left the courthouse was absolutely out of the ordinary. It involved May spraying and a speeding close call car, and in both cases, our Channel 7 News crew was the target. Our investigative seven inside report. There was something you were famous for, and that is owning the story. That's interesting. Um, it's because most people, I'll tell you a story I'd own right now if I were on the air, and it's Oakland. 
and it's what's happening in Oakland because I think most of the stations have walked away from it. I think they do, and I, and I don't see them all, so I'm making a generality here that probably wouldn't hold up in court, but uh, most of the stations that I see have walked away from it, and they continue to re relay the hits, runs, and errors. 67 people killed in Oakland this year so far. Drive-by shooting, eight dead, whatever it is without ever getting into the substance of it and finding out what it's all about. Now that not only takes courage, that takes um, spunk, it takes battling, it takes fighting to get it across. If you had taken the anchor job in Current Affair, I'm wondering, knowing you and the way you leave your imprint on everything you do, how different a program would that be today? Well, it wouldn't be what it is. Uh, as a matter of fact, I happened to watch it last night, and uh, the, the woman anchor on it now opened up smiling. And, and, of course, that's the pleasant thing to do. I mean, you know, you're just greeting people. But she was talking murder. Now, how do you do that? I mean, if you really care, how do you open up, good evening, I'm so, uh, we have slaying in the news tonight, you know. And, and I'm going, I, I, I could never do that. That's why I'm, I don't do that. I could never do that. Uh, I think that... Um, uh, I argued this with somebody one day at an RTNDA, and it was that when I come in, and I, everybody knows this anchor, so I won't even name the person, but locally, when I come in, uh, I put on my anchor hat, and then I go on, and I'm the anchor, and when the show's over, I take off my anchor hat, and I go about my business, and that's the only way I can do it, and I said, well, that's fine, but I think that's phony. I think, I think what you have to do is you have to come in as the person you always are. Would you put yourself through this and do the career all over again if you had the chance from the start? Go back? Well, we can't go back. No, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. would you do it? Oh, because sure. it's taken a lot out of you. It's, well, it has, and yet uh, it's given me so much. I mean, you know, it taketh and it giveth, and God forbid that you ever leave Channel 5. Well, the day has to come. Well, sooner or later. They always say for every star, there's the person in the wing who was looking forward to making them a past star, you know. Uh, the life after television has been great because I haven't stopped. I'm still as involved as I was. I, uh, I still do documentaries. I don't get many of them on, but we're researching and writing. And I found out that, that even though you don't have a television camera, you can still be a reporter. You can still be an observer. You still see what's going on, you know. So we've been doing that. And environmentalism has become very big with me. Um, the downwinders, whom I feel very sorry for, and there are downwinders who live in Utah and Nevada and the Strip in, in, in uh, Arizona, who, who were the victims of our atomic bomb testing and who have never gotten any recourse from the government. After all these years, all those people still remember Van Amberg, who well, still I care about what's happening to him. You can write to Dave. Uh, if you'd like to see Van back on the air, and uh, Dave, you can send the letters on to me if you want. <laughs>